to the Karen Cave. Look what I've got here today. Um, just a bunch of goodies, and you know this is going to be a sweet one today. And I also have a, um, an honored guest to be with me to help me with this wonderful southern banana pudding. Again, you know, after making that um, fried bologna sandwich the other day that I posted up there, you know that I'm from the Midwest, and true southern um, banana pudding which started and it really originate, originated around 1898 um, is when banana pudding kind of came about. But Nabisco, um, they didn't start marketing and selling their vanilla wafers to 1940. So talk about something that goes way back. Um, I have a special guest here, um, Donna, come on, come on over here. Hello. This is Donna West, um, and I have the honor of having her here with me, and we are going to make her mother's banana pudding today. And this is um, a picture of her mom. Um, we brought this here. So Donna, tell me a little bit about your mom. Well, <clears throat> she was a very sweet lady um, and she was born in 1915. So, Woo! Yes. so we got some banana pudding. We are really yes. gonna whip up well and you know what? You're gonna wanna mark this recipe down. But so tell me about your mom. Okay, well her name was Allie and um, she grew up in Johnston County here in North Carolina and she was the third from the bottom of 12. Oh my goodness, so 12 children. 12 children in one family. So she was... Mm -hmm. I bet they had one bathroom. They didn't, have, well it was probably outside. outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and she did, she had to, um, her mom sometimes got a lot of headaches so her dad would get her up and say you've got to go fix the biscuits for everybody so she learned how to he'd get her a stool and put her at the counter so she had to do the biscuits for everybody first thing in the morning before she even went to school if she went to school um she did up until the, like the fifth grade but she managed with um and then she had five children of her own so i was the youngest of the five and she didn't like for us to be in the kitchen too much because she wanted to get it done real quick. But she did teach us and leave us some very um, memorable recipes and some of them in her handwriting. But, um, and she always on Sunday, not always, but if we had like fried chicken and stuff, banana pudding was on the Sunday dinner recipe and she brought it out warm and it didn't last long. So she was a very good cook. She learned from a young age wow. to cook. And they cooked so different back then. They didn't have the tools that we have now, all the electric things, all the electronic things. Um, so just think about, you know, how that all happened. And we'll talk about that as we're making this recipe. So Donna, um, how do I know Donna? And how do I know that this banana pudding recipe is the best? Well, my daughter was lucky enough to marry into Donna's family. And her son absolutely loves banana pudding. And so it can't be anybody else's banana pudding but grandma's. So we're going to introduce you to this recipe. We're going to get started. We're going to talk to you a little bit about the ingredients um, coming up next. But the biggest thing is those vanilla, vanilla wafers that go into this and some fresh bananas. This is going to be all made from scratch. There's nothing coming out of a box but these vanilla wafers. So stick with us and we'll be right back and we're going to get started. Okay, so we're back and we are gonna get started here. You know how I am, I like to have everything all measured out and so does Donna. We're very organized cooks. Um, so we're gonna start with the custard filling, right? Right, okay. That's the first so, step. <clears throat> not a whole lot of ingredients, but it's super delicious. So I'm gonna read out um, the ingredients um, from Donna's mother's recipe and Donna's gonna show you exactly how her mom made it. So let's switch positions here. Okay. And the first thing that's on here is that there's three egg yolks. Three so egg yolks. So we separated those. Um, and Donna's gonna take the double boiler. Yes, you need a double boiler. I bet a lot of you don't have those, do you? But anyhow, they are great to cook in and they're actually great to warm things up. And I think one of the things I remember my mom using that for was to warm up macaroni and cheese. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. So it wouldn't burn. You have the water underneath um, and the bottom part and then the top part cooks from that heat and that steam coming from that. Okay, so back to our custard filling. We've got three egg yolks. We did keep the egg whites. Don't throw those out. We're gonna use those for the meringue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set those aside. Absolutely. So Donna, go ahead and explain. 
Okay, so you have the three egg yolks and you want them kind of beaten up a little bit so they're all kind of mixed together. And you just pour those in after you've kind of mixed them up. And then you've got your three fourths cup of, of sugar. And then comes the one and a Ooh. half teaspoons of vanilla. vanilla. Awesome. Oh. Oh, it's out of your way. This is what you call team cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to have a taste of this stuff because we've had it in the past and it is delicious. And that's why I, I wanted to get Don on here just to talk about it and talk about her mom and a little bit growing up in that family, which is always fun to hear um, how you do it. And so now Donna's going to add some four tablespoons of flour to her mixture. This just gives it the four tablespoons will help thicken it up. Um, it's almost kind of like making a rouge. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last part of this custard is three cups of milk. gas heat from the chamber stove. So go ahead and light it up, Donna. Okay, I think I can do this. There you go. There's those beautiful blue flames. And you can adjust it. I think that's good. You, okay. I think we do this on medium heat, but you have to keep it constantly stirring because you do not want it to scorch. So you just keep stirring and stirring, and that's the hard part, sanding right over it. But and, um, and how do you know when it's done? Like, how do you know when it's ready to... When it, it will thicken up, when it gets thick and real thick, then you know it's not like, it's just more by eyesight, as you said okay. many times. Mm -hmm. It's more by eyesight that you can tell that um, it's gotten thicker. Okay. So, so do we need to slice up our bananas next? Is that not well, quite yet? Not quite yet. I would okay. get this done first. Okay. And then, because you have to keep stirring this, and this can cool a little bit while you're slicing. Um, I just uh, have this ready, and I put my vanilla wafers down and slice my bananas and pour this on top. So this okay. is kind of a, unless you um, you want to be really prepared and have them ready, I just I do it <laughs> as I'm going. <laughs> listen to her. Don't listen to me on this recipe. Okay, so we're going to get this custard made, and we'll be right back. So we've got the all the ingredients together and we're trying to get the custard thickened. And as you can tell, it's a little bit thicker than what it was at the very beginning, but we've got to cook it just a little bit longer in this double boiler to get it really thick so it can go over your bananas and vanilla wafers. So we're still stirring, stirring constantly, and hopefully it won't be long before we're all done. Okay, Donna, I think it's ready. Okay. <laughs> It has thickened up quite quite a bit, and we're going to do another little trick that my mom taught me so we won't uh, cook the bananas. We're going to cool this custard so it will thicken up even more in a, what we call an ice bath. So it's getting thicker as it cools down. We're going to start with, um, we can put a layer of our layer our vanilla wafers. Cookies, yep, cookies. cookies. Okay, so we can do that, and then we'll start slicing our bananas. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna put a layer of cookies down on the bottom of this pan. Don't you love this old Pyrex pan? This was my grandma's. I love it. Absolutely, and we're using a two quart or um, casserole dish, because this makes enough to make a fairly good size helping of banana pudding. So don't you know that's gonna look so pretty with that meringue coming out of there? Woo, it's gonna be pretty. So okay, I got my cookies in the bottom like mm -hmm. that, and I'm gonna go ahead and- Next is the bananas. bananas. Okay, the banana. 
So I've got my mandolin here, and I'm just going to, how about that? Look at that. Slices them nice and fast. Wow, there you go. Yeah, you know, Grandma didn't have one of these. No, she did. She? Mm -hmm. We just took a knife and went, went to town. But you got to watch your fingers on this one because you could lose one. So do you put the bananas on top of that, or do you put, put another? No, you put the bananas, the... The last layer is the custard. So you have your cookies, your bananas, and then your custard. Okay. And then you repeat the layers. Um, the next step would be another layer of, of your cookies, bananas, and the last thing that you want on top before the meringue is the custard. Okay. And after we get all of our layers on this, are we going to bake that, or do we just bake it with the meringue on it? You have to bake it with the meringue on it. All right. So you're going to have to make the meringue, and then you bake the meringue. Because all of this is cooked. It's ready to go. I bet you guys want to come over to my house. Mm -hmm. Come on over to the Karen Cave. We are cooking up something really are. good. Let's see, Karen. She's trying to make me a southern bell. <laughs> you think that's going to happen? I don't think so, but no. we no. still like, um, <laughs> we still let you live down here. Okay. Okay. Is it getting thicker? Uh, it is. It's getting thicker. I All think right. we're good. So go ahead and put your okay. bananas. Okay. And I'll start. Put that over there. Okay. And so you can see what we're doing here. We'll put some bananas down here. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh, and it tastes delicious. I just had to take a sample. <laughs> we should be FaceTiming with your son. <laughs> uh, yes, we should be FaceTiming with him. He probably quit work and come on over here. Yeah, I'm just know, saying. Right? <laughs> We'll just keep it our secret. We don't want to share any right now. But no, I think first dibs are. I think we're gonna it's probably us. rock and roll on this this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> but and when I came home from, we would come home from church. The table legs would just be bowed with uh, whatever we were having for our Sunday dinner, and the last thing that Mom would take out of the of the oven would be the banana pudding. Mm -hmm. And it did not last long, so, I can tell you. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got that layer of bananas there. Okay. So I'm going to just scoot your ice over That's just a little fine. bit. And then you can add that to it. And I'm going to We're just going to pour this right over top of it. Nothing fancy about it. Just, just go for it. Mm -hmm. And then another layer of cookies. Another layer of cookies. And another layer of banana. Okay. Um, yep, it's good. No doubt about it. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to stick in your fingers in there? What uh, the heck? Uh, no, really. Well, you know, All cooks right. have to... Have Got a to taste stand. along the way. Yeah, I know. My I, I always talk about my grandfather that was a chef, and he did so many really fun recipes, and I'm going to share a lot of those with you this winter. Um, they're really more... To me, they're kind of comfort, but he was always taste testing, and yep. Yep. Yeah, he was he was an amazing chef. Left us some good recipes. Wow, nothing like those um, tried and true recipes that yeah. you can have from family. Yeah, the best ones are in their handwriting, right? Absolutely. Uh, okay, let's stick one more right there, and give me a minute here. We're gonna slice up some more banana. Absolutely. This comes together pretty quickly. It did take the longest. Uh, it takes you know maybe ten minutes to get the custard going but once you get the water boiling in your double boiler and it comes together it doesn't take too long at all these bananas are nice and fresh they yeah are. the longest part of this whole recipe is doing the custard it so. is but you gotta do it in that double boiler make it from scratch don't take it out of the box no box pudding mm -hmm. for us mm -mm. nope well, they didn't have a lot of that back then. No. When my mom was, I mean, that was probably coming around about then. Right. And so you just, you used what you had on hand. That's one of the things that the other day I was short on something. I'm like, well, use what you've got in the pantry. Just just go with it. And yeah. My mom was very good at that. She handed that little trait down to my daughter. She can take any piece of food oh, and, she, she's and, very and make good a meal out of it. She's very, and she's given some good tips with that too. Yeah. All right, we're ready for right, another layer. Ready for more? Yep. Okay. You think uh, one more layer after that? I think maybe if I. 
and very good. You have no idea how good this looks. Mm. Oh. I if they only had smell a vision. You know, if we could smell a vision. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There's a, there's a, there's something there's we can thought, invent, right? Yeah. All right. right. A thought. I think we can make one more layer. All right. I could have started doing that. Hey, I can help you. I'm not just the custard lady. I'm. Uh, well, the mini <sighs> chips. I know some of them are stuck together here. They are. But I tell you, we've just become friends at heart since um, her daughter and my son have gotten married. We just, it's just like I have a new best friend. Yep. So. And now we're cooking together. This is really dangerous. <laughs> it is dangerous. Mm. But good for our family. Okay, yeah. enough of that. Yeah, and her, husband, her son... <clears throat> He loves to eat. Oh my goodness. He does love to eat. I never, I never had too many complaints out of my boys when they were. Most of them don't complain. Nope. Sometimes they get a little fussy, but who cares? Well, I my boys them, were the same way. Yep. They like to grow up eating whatever mom was cooking, or especially what grandma was cooking. Gosh, that was even better than mom's cooking. Oh, absolutely. They would go down there because grandma. And Gang and ate early, and so they'd go down there because they could walk to their house. They'd walk mm. down there and they'd have supper with them. Then they'd come back and they'd eat supper with us. So they had they had plenty of food. they had plenty of food. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, look at this! Oh, this is so pretty. I tell you, my goodness. Maybe we could tip the bowl a little bit and just show how beautiful this is coming together. Look at how pretty. <coughs> Well, don't want to break the bowl. Okay. I think we're good. You think we're good? I think we're good. All right, I'm going to pour the last of the custard on there, and then our next step is our meringue. Can you just scotch on? That would be great. And there you go. Okay. Just so proud of this custard. It is coming together. Woo! So good. Yeah. I think that ice and the cold bath brings it down and it, it really cools it. It nicely. did and it made it it made it thicker real quick. So you're trying to get this together and absolutely. I got that tip from my sister. So uh, I'm passing it along. That was her tip to get it thicker. So Karen, how is how is it that they say this in the South? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's <laughs> Look at that dish. <laughs> okay, we're gonna finish doing this, and then we're gonna get set up to make some meringue, and then we're gonna get it in the oven and show you the final results. So stick with us. Yes. We'll be right back. So now that we've got all of our bananas and our custard all layered, we are gonna take grandma's. Um, fine sunbeam machine here and we're going to make some meringue. So the first thing that goes into the meringue is the three egg whites that we saved from the three egg yolks that we used in the custard. Right. Okay. And then we have a fourth of a cup of sugar. Yeah, we have to gradually add that. We got to get okay, this. Okay, so we're going to get that in first. Yep. And then we have a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar and we've got a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring so okay um, I'm gonna get this this going and get them a little frothy first I do want sure and that a teaspoon of vanilla I gotta get this uh, gotta get them whipped up first so uh, making this meringue you want to put it at a high speed and get them real fluffy yes, yes. okay yeah so when they get kind of as I say frothy you know look like uh, sea foam um, you kind of know to, um, I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and, um, you think it's good? Yeah, I thought it got made. So. Okay. So once you start adding that sugar and the cream of tar, they get real fluffy, and you want a stiff peak on them, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So... I'm going to go ahead and put this in. So we've got a teaspoon of the vanilla flavoring. We've got a half teaspoon of the cream of tartar. And then we're going 
going to gradually add this. You just have to slowly add your sugar in. You don't want to dump it all in there at one time. You kind of let it get mixed around because if you don't, your meringue will be kind of crunchy, grainy. And you can see how the meringue is starting to form as you're adding the sugar to it. meringue for all things like uh, my mom's next favorite thing was lemon pie she made that for lots of church bake sales and when the boys were sick she was always bringing them a lemon pie mm -hmm. so meringue goes on a lot of things so it's if you want your mixer at the highest speed that you have yeah I think it's coming along It's looking good. Okay, we're going to let this meringue get to the point where it gets to a nice peak on it, and then we'll show you um, how that looks, and we'll add it to the top, and we're going to pop that banana pudding in that chamber stove and cook it up. So stay with us. Okay, so you can tell that we're getting close, and I think when we take the beaters out, we're going to turn this off, and you'll see how it's... It has a stiff peak to it. Can you see those little peaks in there? And so you know that it's ready to go. So we're gonna put it on top of our um, banana pudding and then we're gonna bake it. So here we go. We're gonna put our meringue on top of our banana pudding. And once we get this all spread out and you want to make sure that you put it in the middle and then seal the edges because somehow if you don't seal those edges, it just doesn't cook right. And this is like you can use it when you do the baked Alaska, they, they use the meringue, so hey. Um, but you do wanna seal your edges. So put it in the middle and go from to the outside with it. That's my tip um, that my mom gave me. So you. And if you want to get real fancy with it, you can put some swirls in it. There you go. It's all ready to put in our chamber oven. We're going to get that ready to go and bake this um, meringue. And we'll be right back. All right, so we're ready to bake our uh, banana pudding just to get the... We're going to put it in this chamber stove at 350 degrees just to bake our meringue and get it really delicately brown. And then we'll be ready for our sample. Something smells really good in there. What do you think? I think so too. Okay. You ready to check it out? Yeah, let's see if that meringue has got that little brown cover on it. Oh, gosh. wait, do you see this? Oh, oh my goodness, look at this. My mama would be so proud. Oh gosh, wow. did that turn out perfect? This is so good. Lord, have mercy. mercy. <laughs> we are gonna have oh some gosh. good eating. Okay, we're gonna let this cool and then we're gonna scoop it out and we're gonna give it the taste test. So hang on. Okay, I think we're ready for the taste test. And I really want to thank Donna, and most of all, I want to thank her mother for writing this recipe and putting it together, but most of all, handing it down. This is what all um, the recipes that I love doing is our family recipes. This is a family recipe. Absolutely. And the most important thing is keep handing these recipes down to your kids. Um, they Everything's made from scratch here. There's nothing out of a box, so it's super delicious. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Oh gosh. Look at the steam coming out of that. 
It is so good. Uh oh. Now, you want a little more? You know, they don't say banana in the South, they say manners. You want some manners? <laughs> Nana pudding. Nana pudding. Oh okay. my gosh, here we go. Okay, mama, here we go. See if I did good. Mmm. Oh, this is perfect. Brings back memories. Does it? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Sure does. Oh, this is wonderful. This has been a super treat for me having Donna here. And I hope this has all been a super treat for you. Thank Here's you. Here's to some Nana pudding. pudding. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy cooking. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining me in the Karen Cave. I really enjoy sharing my family recipes with you, and I hope you'll continue to come back. Please subscribe to my page and give me a thumbs up for those that you like. I look forward to next time. Until then, happy cooking.